Peace family, how you doing? Welcome to a special episode uh, with Black Magic. I have a very, very, very special guest. Um, we're doing this, this is a little different. We're doing this interview early in the morning. So by the time you see it, I will upload it to YouTube uh, during the nighttime. Uh, we had to do this interview early in the morning. My guest asked not to be seen on camera. So this is going to be an audio interview and I will provide uh, some pictures as well. Um, I want to take this time to welcome uh, the legendary. Um, if anybody knows anything about consciousness, melanin, if you were around in the 90s, early 2000s, the 80s, uh, this woman, I mean, the, 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 the information that she put out there to the public is absolutely amazing. A lot of this information is talked about on the Internet today, and is, she's not giving credit uh, for a lot of the things that she originally put out to the public. So it is my pleasure to welcome to my platform for the first time, none other than Dr. Jew Pukram. Dr. Jew Pukram, welcome to the show. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Brother Rich. Thank you. I'm Indeed glad to it. be here, everybody. Welcome, world. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's an honor having you on here. Um, it, we, we just started 2024, Dr. Jew Pukram, and I know I talked to you over the phone. You have some very important things you want to share with humanity. Uh, a certain message you want to share with humanity, certain things you want to talk about to gear us ready for what's about to come. And when I say what's about to come, not only externally, but internally. So uh, I'm going to allow you to speak, do your thing. We got about an hour and uh, I look forward to this talk today, Dr. Jew Pukram. Uh, go ahead, my sister, with this message to you, this 2024 message to humanity. Okay, well, thank you. Well, it's it's uh, so gratifying to have this opportunity to share with you. What I'm concerned about is the fact that most people are still ignore rant about the wonderful capacity to exhibit color in the skin, the hair, the eyes, et cetera. And we're referring to ourselves as black and brown and a whole bunch of other things, but we don't understand the actual essence of the radiation of light and the forces of the cosmos that are responsible for these hues. They are due to something scientifically known as melanin, M-E-L-A-N-I-N. -E and very few people are using the proper description of what is allowing them to be a multicolored being. It's very important that you understand that because you're dealing with frequencies of the electromagnetic spectrum. That's what's so awesome about melanin. And because of so many things that are happening on the planet right now, you have to understand how this radiation, this force literally that's being emanated from your skin, your hair, your, uh, is all in alignment with the light waves flowing through your entire cosmos. So therefore, melanin, what's happening with the melanin in your skin? So whether you're navy blue, black, uh, whether you are beautiful chocolate brown, whether you're a beautiful, wonderful caramel color brown, what we call radiant yellow, okay, or even a pale pink, you have to understand that's due to the electromagnetic release of photons from the very cells of your body. It's called melanin. So obviously the more melanin you have, which appears to be jet black, navy blue black, the more energy you are radiating and receiving at any particular time. So here on planet Earth, we're going through a tremendous amount of change. And one of the big changes that we have to be aware of is what's happening on April 4th. That is a major eclipse that is happening on the planet. That's April, all, 8th. April 8th, I think. April 8th, excuse me. And all of our electromagnetic wave frequencies are going to shift. Depends on how much electromagnetic energy you're radiating, that is the degree and the concentration of melanin that you have in your tissues will change what? They will change the actual coding 
and the information that's present in your what? In your DNA. So most of us don't think about our archive of knowledge in the form of DNA proteins, which then are interpreted by its uh, chemical uh, encoding by the tissues, but that's what's happening. And so depending upon how much light we're receiving from the planet, from the cosmos, it's going to actually play our DNA like a piano keyboard. Wow. So I want you to see that in your mind, that wow. your DNA now, just like a piano keyboard, is going to be played by the interaction of the rays from the sun or lack of the rays from the cosmos, the rays from our solar system, our neighboring planets, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, our solar systems that are associated with us. Andromeda, Sirius B, all of those different frequencies of energy are going to be modulating and playing our DNA. So many of you will come into enlightenment, awarenesses, or you'll be stymied by loss of memory, perhaps, or insights from the past. A lot of things will be happening, but you need to know that that's going to start as of the 8th of uh, April, and also it may last a while because we're going to have a chain of eclipses that are going to occur. So what does that mean? That means also that the blood chemistry is going to shift because we still don't understand that every thought that you have is chemicalized by what? That wonderful organ known as the brain, which releases the chemistry of the translation of your thoughts, which are not three-dimensional, making them a three-dimensional substance in the form of chemistry that's now carried through every cell of your body through the red blood cell. And so that's so important for you to know. Most people, they just think and they just don't think of the fact that every thought is chemistry that every thought does matter and it matters, becomes physical by the brain. So the next time you want to use what I call curse words, you want to basically think of people in a very uh, low inanimate forms, that's chemistry in your own blood. Do you want to really create that kind of chemistry in your own bloodstream? So when we start recognizing that everything we say Every image that we can imagine in our mind is a chemical. Do you want to do that to yourself? So pay attention now because as of the 8th of April, it's going to be very significant what's going to be occurring in your body. And there's really not much you can do about it unless you change what? Your thinking. It's so important because then the brain will translate the thoughts into different chemical compositions. That's so important. So once we understand now that the brain is the big key here, but what you think matters, it really becomes physical. Now we can see immediately change happen in our life. Everybody's, I want this. I want to have that experience, whatever, but they don't understand. It's really true. All you have to do, as the children say, is think about it. Every time you think about what you want, that is chemistry in your blood. So it's just like taking uh, a, a dose of co coffee or some substance that you really like. The more you drink it, the more effect it has on your bloodstream. Same thing with your thoughts. It's not just hoping and wishing, even though, even though those are chemistry, chemicals. It's about the focus. Can you focus? Can you hold that thought? Can you intensify that thought so profoundly that the chemistry just takes over the direction of all your tissues? When that happens, guess what? Your whole radiance, your whole electromagnetic field, we think about that in terms of aura, the magnetism that's radiating from you. It shifts, and the more powerful that becomes, the more gravitational, 
And the more forceful that magnet becomes in every cell of your body that you can manifest whatever you can really focus on and chemicalize immediately. This is so important to grasp. So people are having all kinds of uh, perceptions on how they can, quote, uh, manifest. But it's really very simple. When you understand what the brain is about and you understand that the clearer that you see something, that you hear whatever it is that you think is radiating an auditory frequency, the chemistry in the body, in the blood cells made by your what? Your master brain creates the magnetic field in every cell to precipitate instantly or over time what it is that you are wanting to materialize. You have to understand it. It's just that simple. So when you do very, I just want to say uh, thoughtless, really thoughtless activities like not, not drinking enough water or filling your body with foreign chemicals that you know change the function of your cells. You then interfere with your electromagnetic capabilities. And you have to be careful about that. So do you want to take a drug that you know changes the function of your cells? A chemical, that's all the chemistry and drugs, same word with meaning. We're just using a different term to describe the result. Function of the cells is altered. If you want what you want, you need to be as clear and succinct as possible. And all you have to do is what? Make sure the cells are really hydrated. Hydrogen, oxygen are very important for the cells to be able to do what they do. To make the chemicals, which creates a force within them, a magnetism or electrical that is going to affect all the other forms of matter in your, in your environment. The more magnetic, depends on the magnetic frequency of the object you want to manifest, it will attract it to you. The more electrical the frequency is of your tissues, the further away the event or the object will be from your presence. That's very, very important that you understand that. Experiences you don't want to have. All you have to do is make sure that the electrical field in your tissues relative to that experience is very powerful. And if that's the case, you'll never have that experience in your life. That's why you don't want to, as they say, fear anything, because fear is a very magnetic thought. You have to understand that. So if there's something you don't want to experience, you never want to be, quote, afraid of it. See, nobody ever taught you that kind of secret. But it's actually all about the chemistry and the electromagnetic fields that you create from the chemistry that is created by your thoughts, therefore translated by your brain into a chemistry released into your bloodstream. So simple. So I've wanted for decades to be able to tell you this. All the books that you've been buying, you know, I've been through medical school or residency and surgery, quantum physics, etc. But they just don't make it so simple and clear. It's really very clear. That's why I just love the children, because they can just really translate how you do this manifest, manifest so simply. So pay attention because, again, April 8th is when we have to really pay attention to what the huge bodies of mass, our moon, our planet, the uh, neighboring planets in our solar system, solar system are doing because of the amount of electromagnetic energy they are going to be reject, uh, releasing on ourselves 
as well as on the planet. So everything will have a different charge and that effect with you would be quite different. Now, I want to talk a little bit more about melanin because we are so consumed, con confused about that and we disrespect it. It's very much alive. It very much is always carrying the radiances or the photonic projections of our thinking. And so most of you do not understand that it's something that every cell in your body makes to a greater or lesser degree. But you cannot have a physical body in the third dimension without the presence of melanin. So when we speak of people being amelanated, that is that they have very little melanin, Unfortunately, they refer to themselves as white in color, which is not true, but that's the term that they use. And it has, unfortunately, a lot of political, social, economic definitions associated with it. And again, that's chemistry that they have to basically interact their whole life with because of how they're thinking of themselves. You cannot have a physical body that does not have its own personal cellular radiant sun in the cell. And that's what melanin is. Melanin is a combination of photons, light eminent bodied that is centered in every cell so that every cell can have its own little sun to be able to energize it to create all of the chemical activities necessary for you to what have a human body. And so therefore the human body has what? 23 trillion plus cells, 23 trillion plus cells. So the whole idea that a person is actually thinking that they alone are doing whatever they do is a misnomer. It's very ignore rant and being totally unaware that to have a physical body, regardless of whether it's six feet tall or whether it's three and a half feet tall, is an agreement. It's an agreement that trillions of cells have come together, unified their energy and are working in coordination and agreement to do certain things. So you're always in communication with many cells with full consciousness to allow you to unify, to orchestrate those cells so that you can do one thing, two things, or a multiplicity of things at any particular time but you're never alone. Can you understand this? You're never alone. So many people are suffering thinking that they're alone, that they're by themselves. <laughs> I laugh because that's impossible. Even if you're sitting on a mountain that you think, as far as a physical body goes, that you're unaccompanied, that nobody is with you. Oh, you are in very much high companionship, because within just your body, you have 23 trillion conscious miniature beings called cells that are sitting there with you. 23 trillion. Most of you can't write those, that number in digits. That's just how many cells you have that are sitting there with you on the mountain, looking at the sky, sitting on the grass, whatever else your, what you think your single body is doing. All of those cells are having the same experience with you and they're all conscious. So once we can get over this concept that we are quote alone, that we quote, think that we're not interacting and communicating with other life forms is again, something that you're gonna have to transform that cast. It's a cast that you literally have been raised in, educated in, to think that you can be alone. You can never be alone. That's why your capacity to 
be able to enjoy and to unify with other beings. Most of all, the 23 trillion cells within yourself is so important to master this lifetime. You've got to learn how to communicate with self, all the 23 trillion of yourselves, as well as the 23 trillion of somebody else's body or multiple bodies to be able to have what is known as genuine harmony. You've got to be able to do that. So most people never manage that. They never manage that because they are operating out of a caste where they don't really understand that the first population of yourself that you're going to have to get along with and manage is the 23 trillion cells in your own body. How many of you have ever taken the time to just even talk to your toe and tell your toe how important it is and that you're glad that it's that it is part of the crew to allow you to have balance in walking and running and bicycling, anything. You never even said thank you to your toe one day in your present life. Can you imagine that? Now, how many thousands of cells are in that one toe? I don't have the number yet, but I'm sure we have some anatomist that's going to find out how many in a, an adult human toe, how many cells you have that allow that aspect of yourself to be conscious and exist. Amazing, but I really want to take the time to bring it to your attention that this level of self unif unif unification and awareness is so necessary in your consciousness, in your mind, for you to be all you can be with the use of all the energy and forces that are in your physical body. You are carrying an awesome force field. Now you can name it many things. And of course the religions have taken upon themselves to give us names as to what we should label this force as. You can choose whatever you want. The key is, can you acknowledge the force in every aspect of your physical body, from your fingernail to the hairs on your head, to your fingers, to your organs, et cetera, your arm, your leg, your intestines, can you consciously communicate with all of those cells through the one unified force that animates them, enlivens them so that you can have a physical body? Let's take that on. Okay, let's go within and start this level of communication with ourselves. Most of us have never taken that journey. So even those who have meditated for years, the point is in the meditation that you're trying not to be aware that you're in communication with anything. And so that's a wonderful place to be in. No place literally. But what does that do literally for the tissues of your body, for the cells of your body? And you still haven't acknowledged them and unified with them. This is the whole problem that we have with what? Dis-ease in the body. As a physician, having been trained as a surgeon, that if we could begin to communicate with our tissues directly, communicate with our organs directly, we would not have to have organs removed or have malformations and deformities altered outside of ourselves because you can do that by communication. And we know that. That's why communicating is so important. So when have you had the, uh, had the opportunity or taken the time to communicate with a part of the body that doesn't feel harmonic to you, that you may have some discomfort, even intense electromagnetic discharges known as pain. When have you taken the time and just gone into that part of the body and focused on it, which is really like taking a seat 
in that area of the body and communicating with it, asking it, hey, what's the deal? What is going on here? What is it that needs to be discovered, discussed, resolved, unified, or transformed in awareness? Have you ever had that discussion with that area of your body, your skin, your eye, your ears? Could be any part of the body, but we don't take time to do that. We're so busy trying to figure out how to get rid of it or how to have somebody cut it off, or we need to take a pill or put some paste on it or some type of emollient, anything, but you in consciousness are not going to directly there and sitting in the stimuli, in the energy being dis- discharged that has now been processed by the brain, that you need some harmony, some attention brought to that area to redirect, regulate, organize, dismiss, or accelerate the energy in that part of the body. It's really simple. So I've been doing a study now on something that has finally come to this dimension known as the medical beds. And the med beds are phenomenal. And I hope that that will be our whole new hospital system where we'll just be able to go into an electromagnetic field in a cabinet and have all of the electromagnetic fields within our tissues within our organs, et cetera, regulated to their uniform and agreed upon harmony. And when that happens, that's going to be marvelous. But are we going to have the same problem where people just think, oh, we can just go somewhere and have somebody push on the buttons and we just lay down and somebody does it for us? Well, yes, that's part of our infancy because that's how we treat the children. Somebody else feeds them and gets the food and prepares it and takes them around, et cetera. That's the infancy in our unification with ourselves. but you're still going to have to mature in that body to recognize that it's wonderful that I can, you know, go lay down in a med bed, but still in all, that part of the body, those cells, That organ is calling for my communication and attention. And so we're still going to have to be able to go deep into ourselves and communicate with ourselves. And so it's so important now that if you take some time to really find out about the ultra structure of the organ, the uh, organ components or what I call organelles that it's going to be easier for you to communicate with them when you understand what they do. I mean, can you imagine? I think it's so phenomenal. We can just take something so simple, such as a fingernail. Can you imagine that a fingernail can actually and can become a hair on your head? They all come from the same cell. The same cell makes fingernails, skin, and hair. How diverse can a cell be? Infinite. That's what's so awesome. So therefore, has a person ever thought about that? That when I actually am rubbing my fingernail, I'm also rubbing my skin and my hair. And so what is making this tissue in the third dimension appear so different? And it's because of how those cells are communicating within themselves and the chemistry that they are making to allow them to have a different form and shape and function in this dimension, which is what we do all the time with the entire physical body. So I think it's time now that we stop uh, making things so complicated for ourselves as though we can't understand the gist of what's really happening here. And that occurs, that kind of anonymity to oneself is because you haven't accepted the true identity of who and what you are. A force, a limitless, infinite force. 
And when you understand that that's what you are, and that force is housed and contained in a, what we call physical structure, animated and adapted to change known as a human body, now you're going to be able to make better sense of what you are, who you are, and what you can do. It's not about what we can't do. It's about what we can do and what are we going to take responsibility for what we do in this dimension. And that's been one of the big problems that we do all kinds of things, but we don't take responsibility for it. And we deny that we've done what we've done. And then we want to talk about being a what? (laughs) That favorite word known as a victim. There's no such thing in a human body. Oh my goodness. With all the limitless power you have and all of the incredible capabilities, you are never a victim. You are never a victim. You may not understand how you use your powers to create the phenomena that you may be uh, facing, but you did it. And so all you have to do is ask for what? Awareness. Awareness of what? Of how you can change. That's all you have to do. And when that is requested in your thinking, the brain will chemically translate that into chemistry released into the bloodstream so that every cell in your body will know what to do. It has such options and if they can, the cells, cells will change and you will then do what? Experience the new reality that you created and the cells will change their function and their organization to create a whole different form in this dimension. That's how change occurs. And it can be instant or it can take a while. Depends on your dexterity, flexibility, and your willingness to shift. Yeah, that's what's so great about it. So, Brother Rich, are there any questions that you may be thinking about? I hear you over there. Or anything you want to ask me that I can give you greater uh, insight about from my little awareness. I, I love what you just said so much that I'm going to play this recording while I'm sleeping tonight. And I've never said that before on the show, but I love what you said so much. It resonated with me so much. I wanted to go deep in my subconscious and I'm going to play it while I'm sleeping tonight. So that's how much I enjoyed hearing you talk just now, uh, Dr. Ju Pukram. What I want to ask you about <clears throat> Uh, real quick, real quick, uh, Dr. Drew Pukum, because I think it's very important. I love how you talked about us communicating with ourselves. I think that's something that's slept on that people uh look past. Um, you know, they think that it's ah, that's that that that's not that important. In terms of talking and communicating with ourselves, Drew Drew Pukram, um, how important is the touch factor? Um, I know there's magic in your hands. There's a lot of energy emitted from your hands. So like you talked about touching your toe or letting your toe know how important of a function it, 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 function it has, or let's say your kidneys or your heart. How important is it while you're talking to your cells to put your hand on your body and touch that area of the body that you're talking to? Maybe that amplifies the message that you're getting across. Can you talk about that? Oh, oh sure. Sure. You know, that's very important because, again, you know, I talked about the fact that we're just a huge, powerful, infinite magnetic field. And so that means that we are emanating all different frequencies or wavelengths of energy. And so, therefore, and we we know that if another person touches us, you know, it's, oh, my goodness, your hand is cold or, oh, that feels really warm, et cetera, or that feels strange. And that's because the energy, the light, the photons that are emanating from every cell unified is what we are feeling and sensating. And so, therefore, there's a part of the body that you really want to bring to full awareness of itself in your awareness. The easiest way to do that 
is to amplify the energy that's already within it. And so that's why you touch. So as soon as you touch it, you'll either make that area of the body aware that it's now processing and in the presence of greater light, greater information, greater energy, or that it's losing it. So that's what happens when it appears uh, whole from a touch, that you're giving up more energy than you're receiving. And so you feel the deficit. And we interpret that as coldness. But the point is, is that area of the body is very aware that it's in a different energy field and therefore the awareness has shifted, which now is known as what? Focus. That's what focus is, a shifting and a concentration of awareness. And so that's what happens. And that's why that part of the body will respond quicker, quicker because of the energy shift, because we always are interested in equilibration with our environment. Yeah, so we just want to get into a uh, balance with the environment relative to what it is we want to Indeed. accomplish or experience. Indeed. That's how that works, real simple. So yeah. you want to talk to your toes. It's very interesting, very easy to do that. Just touch them, okay. or Guess what? Put them in a shoe or some type of uh, encompassing energy field, which is a shoe, okay, that basically makes them feel more comfortable or put some pressure on them, which puts more energy into them, and then put your thoughts on them, and you'll see that they will respond differently. Yeah. So it's very simple. Thank you for um, clarifying that. Um, I talked to you briefly before the show. I know you want to talk to humanity about the Apple Vision Pro um, and the direction of technology. I know a lot of people are, a lot of people, it seems, it seems real fascinating. Virtual technology, augmented technology, space shoe, the space shoe um, stuff that they're coming out with. But people know that it has effects on our health, certain people. Uh, could you talk to me about what's your thoughts on the direction we're going with technology and specifically the Apple Vision Pro that recently uh, was released? Well, you know, uh, thanks for the question. And, um, you know, this was, this technology was induced to the public in uh, spurts over 20 years ago. And when I think about spurts of introduction of information, the most common way that we're used to receiving that information is through what? The movies, visually. Okay. And so there was a movie that was produced by uh, a very well act, very known, well known actress, uh, Angela Bassett, known as, quote, Strange Days, unquote. And so I thought it was just so interesting. It has a lot of interesting components to it. But the point was that it was around this type of technology. And it was definitely displayed in that movie that this technology applied to a brain that was not anchored in consciousness to who and what it was relative to itself and to its environment, so we call that being aligned with the cosmic grid, destroyed itself. And I thought that was so amazing. And what was so deep about the new movie, if you look at the movie, and I recommend that you uh, rent that movie and look at it, is that one of the things that was so profound about Angela Bassett's behavior in the movie she would never use the technology. She was aware that the technology for people that weren't very grounded, that not had not really done the personal work on themselves to really be grounded in a sense of comfort and well-being within themselves, didn't do well after exposing their nervous system 
to that technology. And as a matter of fact, their behavior become, became even more bizarre and more dangerous to self and other people because of it. And I just thought that was just so interesting that this was one of the cues in the movie that because it was so important to her to stay healthy and capable of using her nervous system as she understood it, that she would not expose herself to that technology until she in her mind was much more grounded in her own reality. And I was like, wow, that's really something. Now, I've seen a lot of movies, uh, Brother Rich, but I can tell you so many instances instances in that movie as to why I can still remember it so clearly today. And that technology wasn't even available to us. But I definitely got it in my understanding that unless I had really prepared myself to handle that level of intense electromagnetic energy permeating my brain, I would not use that on my brain until I know that I had done the work. Now, what's so interesting about that is that I was introduced probably almost now 30 years to a technology, very simple technology that I have used and shared with many people to allow themselves to be grounded in their own awareness and how to be able to direct their attention, their focus through the proper use of their brain on anything. And I just simply called it the brain balancing program. So offering that program to my patients, most of all, because I was just surprised that when my patients balance their brains, they heal their body. They were able to get rid of the areas of opposition, the areas of low energy, the areas of excessive energy, which is what we call disease in the body on their own merit. So yes, they got some herbs or yes, they changed their diet or even they had to take medication, but it was short lived because with the new groundedness of how to use the brain properly, they were able to resolve it. And so I've used that uh, simple method using what? Sacred geometry for over 30 years. And people do amazing things when they expose themselves to sacred geometry, which in this dimension is the innate language of the third dimension that grounds you into the third dimension without question or quandary. And that is so profound. So just by grounding yourself, your nervous system, your energy field with the grid of how energy flows in this dimension, which is what we call the third dimension, fourth, fifth, and sixth dimension, you can be at ease and feel very comfortable in any of these dimensions relative to what you call the physical world in any activity you may be uh, deciding to be a part of. All right, family. So Dr. Ju Pukum is having some um, technical, technical difficulties on her end. Uh, she's been experiencing a couple of technical difficulties since we, before we started the show. So um, we're going to close out the show soon. but. Um, yeah, I have one. I'm, I'm using my phone now on the microphone to close out the show, family. Thank you for your um, understanding. Uh, Dr. Ju Pukram, to close out the show, I know yes. I... Yeah, go ahead. What you was going to say? I said yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I know I was talking to you because I know this, this is a great, important message for uh, humanity for 2024 and beyond um, in terms of us getting together and understanding the importance of who we are on a multidimensional level. Um, I know you talked to me on the phone about the importance of minerals. You also have a book that talks about the importance of minerals. We're very mineral, mineral deficient people. Uh, in particular, you talked to me on the phone about silica. 
Uh, could you talk to me about how their minerals interact with our trillions of cells, with our, our, our the technology within our body and into uh, with our melanin and everything so we could really understand the importance of it and start to tap into some of these minerals, uh, Dr. Drew Pukwin. Uh, thank you, uh, Brother Rich. So I'm going to make it short. First thing to recognize about silica is that it composes over 35% of this planet. 35% of this planet is crystal. And that's what silica is. It is actually quartz crystal. And why is that so important? Because that is concentrated consciousness. You have to understand that every crystal has concentrated knowledge in it. So that's our archive that is our information about planet Earth, about our solar system, the cosmos is stored in this dimension in crystalline form. That's why we love it. The diamonds, the emeralds, the rubies, the topaz, etc. All of that has crystallized knowledge in it. And when we put that near our bodies or on our bodies, we're absorbing ancient, future, present knowingness. That's awesome, but most people don't know that about uh, jewels or silica. But that's the main thing. And every cell has its own little archive, its own library of stored energy in the crystalline form known as silica. So this is why this is so important. And without that information, how is the cell going to have a backup? How is the cell going to have a reference of knowing what it has done, knowing what it can do, what it can do in the future without its own little library. So the silica is really our library in our cells. And we definitely don't want to be deficient in that. And so with that knowledge, we want to understand then with our everyday present sun in every cell known as melanin, you want to understand what that melanin is radiating into your crystalline structure for you to be able to be relevant and appropriate and most of all manifest exactly what you want at the moment, in the moment, based on your thinking. So you got to know what melanin is and we have to stop referring to ourselves in a singular wavelength like blue or red or yellow or brown. You're just talking about a few wavelengths of light, which is information. When you refer to yourself as melanin, melanated, you're talking about an infinite amount of mental energy, an infinite amount of knowledge, etc. So in my book that you mentioned, I talk about this. The book is entitled Vitamins and Minerals from A to Z with Ethnoconsciousness. And I have a whole chapter that I wrote. I wrote this over 20 years ago because I recognized people needed to know about what their hue, their radiance, their electromagnetic frequency was emanating from and what it was saying about them and their thoughts. But again, we allow uh, what I call politics and uh, commonality to reduce our awareness of our electromagnetic field and its frequency by just saying, oh, just refer to yourself as brown. Oh, you know, you're a high yellow person. Oh, you know, you're beautiful and black. And we've been cut out our awareness of all of this information when we talk about referring to ourselves as melanated, you melanated, theo melanated, okay, 
that tells us about our whole radiant of energy and information that we're emanating at any time in the entire electromagnetic spectrum. So in the book on page 17, I go through a whole description of that in detail, the chemicals that are related to each of the hues of melanin. And I actually have a colored chart in the book that shows when a person is necessarily gravitating to or producing what appears to be a hue of color. Because we, we describe each other like that. Oh, you look so red today. Oh my goodness. You know, you're, you're looking blue today. You are so green. Wow, that radiance of yours is so yellow. What are we saying? We're literally describing the hues of light of photons that that person is emanating from the tissues of their body and the information that is contained in that resonance. So I'm looking here on page 29. You want to basically see this chart and remember it. I'm so um, gratified and I have so much appreciation for the artist that I assigned to ask him if he would capture this truth about us relative to the entire electromagnetic spectrum so that we can understand at any particular time how much information, how much light we are radiating from our body. And what's so deep about it is that as you see the colors of the skin of the individuals who are emanating these particular spectrums of light or color, you can change it at any time. I'm going to tell you a secret, uh, Brother Rich, as I, in this particular sharing with you at this time, did you know that white people can turn as black as they want to? White say say that again. Are, I think I muted it, but say it again. Say that again. <laughs> I said white people can become as black as they want to. All they have to do is change their thinking. The melon molecule, the tyrosomonase DNA aspect of their genes is just as potent as mine. And I'm a very brown person. But why am I brown in appearance and they may be, you know, peachy pink? And it's because how they think. When they change their thinking, the blood chemistry changes, and therefore the DNA now can become active, or it can stay what repressed, like it has been, because the people are thinking about themselves in such a way where the chemistry is not compatible with that section of their DNA. Check that out. They're white because the section of their DNA represses the activity of that component of DNA. Yeah. And so, therefore, when you're even put in an environment that stimulates that portion of the DNA to become active, where they would what, as they call it, tanning, they can't even tan. It burns the skin. Because they haven't changed their thinking, their attitude. Amazing, isn't it? <laughs> but for political reasons, social reasons, for power, ploy reasons, this information isn't revealed. But scientifically, we know all this. That's what I'm saying. In my book, right on page 29, it makes it real clear. Just change your Thinking, which is chemistry, which then changes the function of the DNA, changes the function of the cell, and you get a different entity in yourself. Because we are limitless in what we can be and do. And with that said, I just want to say that I love you all. You're my sisters and brothers. I love you all. And thank you for listening. 
Thank you, brother Rich. Bye bye. Uh, Dr. Drew Pukram, um, I want to thank you for everything. Uh, before you hang up, could you leave your contact information for people who may want? I know you got programs, books, and you do a lot. Could you leave any information for the people out there? Sure. My uh, website that they can contact me on, especially my email, if they want ebooks, etc., is J N R. Century, C E N T U R Y 9 at protonmail.com. Or they can basically go to Amazon and they can purchase the books. Just put my name in there. Okay. Indeed. Yeah, definitely. Once again, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ju Pukram. The people haven't heard from you for, for a while, and I know they're definitely going to enjoy this. Uh, we had a lot of technical difficulties, but we managed to get the message out there regardless. So thank you once again, and I'll talk to you soon, uh, Dr. Pukram. Well, stay connected because I have a lot more to say. I've got a lot of new information about the technology that's been released upon mankind, and they need to prepare themselves to receive the technology. There's nothing wrong with the technology, but if you haven't been prepared to receive it, then that's when it becomes harmful. And that's what we need to learn, how to prepare ourselves for ourselves. Indeed. Incredible, isn't it? Love yeah. you. Thank you, Brother Rich. All right. Talk and to you soon. listen to Brother Rich. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Yeah, thank you once again, family. That was uh, Dr. Ju Pukram. Um, haven't heard from her in so long. It was wonderful to have her on here. Like I said, for those who may not have heard the beginning, um, the sister opted not to be on camera, uh, so this is why this is an audio interview. Uh, I'm going to be working with her in the, later in the year as well, so we'll do other interviews. Um, but, yeah, the sister was having a lot of uh, technical difficulties on the end with her computer. So toward the end of the show, I had to actually use her my phone, the, sp the speaker on my phone, just to get some audio. For some reason, her audio kept messing up. So uh, we, we, we did what we had to do. I'm, I'm thankful that we made it through. And uh, thank you for everybody for tuning in. Make sure you all hit up uh, Dr. Drew Pukram. Get get her book. Um, it's absolutely amazing. I just started reading it uh, this morning. So, yeah, thank you for everybody for listening. Thank you for your patience. And I will see you all next time. Peace.